So Trump lawyer, or at least former Trump lawyer, Sidney Powell, you know, the release the Kraken lady, filed a lawsuit in Georgia last night, and it's utterly embarrassing. It is embarrassing. And even if this isn't formally connected to the Donald Trump campaign and legal team anymore, it's still embarrassing for the entire Trump campaign and the entire National Republican Party and conservative movement. Right off the top, in this legal effort she's making, she misspells the word district. Not once, but twice. It says here, in the United States District Court, Northern District of Georgia, Atlanta Division. In the first one, she just throws an extra C in there. And then in the second one, I don't even know how you accidentally do this. You know, you can put in an accidental letter or leave one out, but she spells like destroyed, destroyed, destroyed court of Georgia. Like it's, it's, it's absurd guys. And so right off the top, there's major typos. And she also has many spacing typos. And if you go into the actual report, there are entire sections that are basically unreadable because of how the word document or whatever program she used to like word process this has jammed like an entire line of words together or has left those little paragraph markers in, uh, you know, in, in many spaces here, the formatting is just awful. Clearly, what happened was this was slapped together. Sidney Powell is still trying to release the Kraken, even though she's not formally working with the Trump team. She's basically set up her own website to fundraise these sort of independent legal efforts. And you still have people, guys, who believe this is all part of the plan. These typos, these spacing issues, they are part of the plan. Having a legal team that is fracturing and deeply unprepared and is going at one another is part of the plan. If you look at the front page here, one of the few things that is intelligible is that she's basically going after the Georgia governor. This this plan that this suit she filed has them listed as defendants, Brian Kemp and Raffensperger, the secretary of state. Now, Kemp is a Trump ally and a lot of people suggest and we never got full confirmation that the reason why Ellison Giuliani came out against uh, Powell and that Powell was sort of removed from the legal team was because she went after Brian Kemp because that was going too far. It's one thing to go after no name Republicans at the state level that are in like, you know, secretary of state capacities. But when you start going at a Georgia governor that that has been, you know, close with Trump, like that was too much. That was too much. Republicans likely even ones that support Trump in this effort likely called him up and said, sir, this is going too far. You have to get rid of the Sidney Powell lady like it's unacceptable. And so she's not part of the team anymore, but she's still doing this. And there's a couple possibilities here. One, she's totally gone rogue and she's doing this on her own. She's like, I'm the only one that can release that Kraken, guys. Or two, and you know, this is possible. What she's doing is actually still basically part of the Trump legal strategy. But because it's really unhinged and it's embarrassing and it's clearly unprofessional and it attacks other prominent Republicans, Trump doesn't want his direct fingerprints on it. So Sidney Powell acts on his behalf without acting on his behalf. But even if you, you know, follow the point that this has nothing to do with Trump anymore. Now, this is just Sidney Powell, you know, encouraging conspiracy theories on her own, doing like a lone wolf thing. This is part of the problem, though. This is part of the problem. What you see here is that you're not going to put this all back in the box. Again, that's the that that's the reality. You're not going to get rid of this once, you know, the electoral college votes for Biden or once he's inaugurated or even a couple of years after that. This will forever shape re the Republican Party and American politics, at least for the next generation and more, because the fact of the matter is a subset of people will always believe the election was taken from Trump. And even if Trump himself and the Republican Party formally move on, whether they admit defeat or at least they admit that there's no chance they can overturn the result and the election's over, whether they do that or not, there are going to be people like Sidney Powell 
who will continue in their own rogue way to try and challenge the result, to sow doubt within the democracy of the United States. And that's the real damage Donald Trump has done. Again, we've noted this. It's all a grift. Powell could be grifting. She's raising money to do this. Clearly, she's not spending the money on editors and proofreaders. So I don't know if she's pocketing it or if she's spending it all somewhere else. But clearly, there's a surplus of money if, uh, if, you, if you're, you, you're raising so much and you can't even afford to make a document look halfway presentable. But that's what they've been the goal from Giuliani and Ellis and, and, and Trump. It's a grift to build up a war chest for after the 2020 election, maybe looking to 2024. But in the process, you're hurting democracy. And that's something that's not funny. I mean, we can laugh at this, but this is a symptom of a sick conservative movement.